All right, welcome everyone. Uh, good to see you all. Uh, let's just begin this time with a word of prayer. Before we begin, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time. We pray, God, that even as we sit together and just learn and study your word, God, we pray that you will minister to our hearts, that you will birth new ideas, new strategies, that, Lord, uh, you will use us, Lord, for building your kingdom here on earth. We thank you. It's a wonderful opportunity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Before we go ahead, let's just do a quick review of what we did uh, last class. We talked about, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit being our leader uh, in terms of church planting. Uh, we we know that God has, you know, he gives us the ability. He gives us the strategies, the ideas, the wisdom on how to do things. Uh, but we must always be people who would rely on the Holy Spirit. Uh, our dependence must be on the Holy Spirit. Uh, eternal fruit is gathered only uh, through depending on God and not by our own self, right? Uh, then we looked at the definition and objectives of church planting. One of the main objectives of church planting is to establish a community of believers together to be self-sustaining communities. We also saw that uh, uh, a, a community of believers where they are hosting the presence of God, uh, new discipling new believers, influencing the region and the surrounding areas and neighborhood, and then multiplying uh, into many, many more churches. Uh, then we also looked at chapter four briefly. We looked at how uh, God has a heart for cities. It's not like, uh, you know, God is just saying, okay, go and start churches. No. The Lord Jesus, when he was doing his earthly ministry, he looked over Jerusalem and he weeped over the city. There are many times the Lord Jesus was burdened to pray over cities. Right? So you and I must understand that wherever God has placed us, wherever God wants us to do our ministry, God has a heart for that city. God has a plan. God has a purpose. God has a vision for the city. And as, as leaders or pioneers who are going to start a ministry, the Lord Jesus wants us to catch that vision that he has, to catch that, you know, that zeal or that passion and desire to see a city saved he wants us to catch that right uh, and so we learn that we must get god's heart for the city we must learn how to see people how god sees people and there'll be times when uh, things may not be going right in our city uh, but how does god see it or people may be turning away from god doing everything that is against god but how does God see it? God sees it as, you know, I, I send my son. The blood of Jesus was shed for even for them. So his heart is for them to be restored, to be redeemed, right? And we must be moved with compassion for the people in our city. We must be people who pray for our city, right? So when it comes to church planting, this is the spiritual foundation that is very important. We talked about uh, foundations a lot. This is the good foundation where we look at the Holy Spirit. He is our guide. He is our strength. And we build or develop a heart for the city. When we have a heart for something, we'll give 110% for it. The Lord Jesus is looking for intercessors, people who want to do something for the city. But he's also asking us to catch that vision. Right? So today, let's go to chapter 5. The natural dynamics. So all this while we're just looking at a few aspects of the spiritual dynamics, which is prayer, depending on the Holy Spirit, uh, trusting in God. And, and now we're looking at a few natural dynamics of urban centers. Right? Now, we talked about how villages and towns are very quickly uh, 
becoming cities or people are moving into cities. Lifestyle is changing. Villagers are no more villagers because they, they know how to use technology. They know how to use uh, internet and things are changing. Now, you and I, when we are planning to start a church, planning to start a ministry in a certain place, it is very, very important, it's critical that we do a good homework on the place. Now, if you look back on the great apostle Paul and the ministry that he did, we see that wherever he went, he he had a heart. He he knew the dynamics of the place. How do we know that? Just an example. With the to the Bereans, he knew that they were people of who knew the word. So there were times when he would have you know, really been able to preach and teach with accuracy. In Acts seventeen, we see that he goes into Corinth and the great sermon in. Uh, Aeropagus in Mars, he's preaching there and he says, some of your own prophets have said this. So he's done his homework. He's learned about the place. He's learned about their culture. He's learned about what their belief system is. But this is Apostle Paul's part. How did he learn it? Probably he went to people, asked them, he read, read you know, maybe articles that were there. But what about you and I now? Everything is available at the tip of our fingers. So, for example, you want to start a church in Egypt. This is just an example. You go to Google and you say, culture of Egypt. You have the whole list. You read it. Now, this, is, this may sound like, hey, why for church planting, I need the Holy Spirit with me. I'll just go out on the streets and do evangelism and start the church. No. You sit, you read the dynamics of that city. So Egypt, read everything about Egypt. Then you open up, you see what is the uh, you know, what is the background of Egypt? What are the the work culture in Egypt? Everything you have to read about it. What is the political crisis? What is the belief system? What is happening in uh, the market sector? What is happening in families? What is the main religion? What are, uh, what are the different kinds of religions? That are there? Uh, what is the literacy rate? So you get everything in the tip of our fingers, right? Question is, how is a city different from a village, right? Now, there are spiritual dynamics, there are natural dynamics. And we know, right? So if you're doing ministry in a city, there are natural dynamics, there are spiritual dynamics. In a village, natural and spiritual dynamics. Now, what are some of the natural dynamics that you and I must consider if we are thinking about planting a church or a ministry? Look at that list there. First one, the history of the city who why when was it established now we may ask ourselves now we're talking about jesus we're going to be talking about the cross and the holy spirit and why would i want to know the history of the city we need to know it excuse me then civic administration or political environment of the city the economy of the city the demographics very very important the age distribution, whether you have to do more youth meetings or more marriage conferences. Right. Language, cultural backgrounds, whether there are more senior citizens, you know, you, you get the dem demographics right. You understand, you get a feel of the place. Socioeconomic issues, what's happening in the city? Is the city uh, what are the, 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 the what is the main economy of the city? Something that you can read about, try to understand. Then you look at, at the educational institutions. What is the uh, you know the, the 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 education system? What are they teaching? 
what are the different kinds of levels of education systems, educational institutions that are available in the city? What are the industries, uh, the industrial hubs, women workers, and our unemployment, disabled process, you know, disabled population, prison system, homeless, the orphans. So you do a complete analysis of the city, right? Now, why is this important? When it comes to church planting, you and I must get a feel of the city, right? Now, for example, I go into a city and I see the city is filled with youth. Right? There is a lot of youth. Everywhere there are colleges, everywhere there are universities. There are a lot of youth that are there around. Now, one thing we know, we can, how do we target you? So you come up with different plans, different strategies that we'll talk about how to do that. Uh, but you already get a feel of the city. Or if you look at, uh, you know, for example, here in Bangalore, uh, the location that I am in uh, serving in right now is the east of Bangalore. Now that is the IT hub. So before coming to when when I was here, when we when we relocated back from uh, another city to Bangalore, the first thing I did was went to Google, and I read about east of Bangalore. And I got an understanding. Okay. Every day, there are about two lakh people working in a certain place, you know, in a corporate sector. It's, it's a corporate office, uh, a tech park, we would call that. Every day, two lakh people come and go in that one tech park. East Bangalore is the fastest growing. Uh, sector in the entire Bangalore. Three, East Bangalore is the most developed uh, in terms of infrastructure, is the most developed place in the entire Bangalore. So now the first thing that comes to my mind is, okay, I've got two lakh people coming in and going. That's only one, you know, office tech park with maybe hundreds of offices. Do like me. So I get to know, okay, what works here? Now, uh, you know, it's not it's not a village setting. These are guys and men and women who are in the corporate sector who work seven days or six days a week, Monday to Friday, morning to evening, working hard. They are probably married, unmarried, but they're going through all of this. There'll be stress, there'll be challenges, there'll be hard work, there'll be so much that we will be going through. So how can we reach out to them? What are the things that we can do? Then we can look at uh, you know, the the uh, the age distribution or the, the language. So one thing we notice is that since they're corporate people, oh, nine out of ten or ten out of ten, all of them will know English. So we know we can target all the two lakh people that are there. Right. Now, like this, what I noticed was there were these tech parks every five kilometers away. And these places had, again, people working. And there were businesses that was that had, because of the corporate uh, you know, boom in that place, there were businesses starting food businesses, hotel businesses, different kinds of businesses that started. Now, what happens? You and I get a feel of the place that we are ministering in. We get to understand, okay, these, the people that I'm reaching out to are the corporate sector. People who are learned, hardworking, they go to office and come. Now, you, you cannot expect Bible study in the afternoon in their house. Why? Because it's not a village. In the village, they have nothing to do, so they will sit and do Bible study in the afternoon. But here, we can't do that. So you get a feel of the city. Now, the same way, wherever we are, 
very important to get a feel of where you want to do your ministry. Don't be in a hurry to launch something or your own ministry. Don't be in a hurry to launch without doing your homework. Do proper homework. Right? The first homework is to pray, seek God. Yes, the spiritual. But in the natural, do a proper homework. Right? Uh, study the place. Understand the people. Understand their lifestyle. The timings that they have. Now, for example, if we are, we are at the corporate, right? you know you're ministering to the corporate sector, we cannot expect to keep a, you, know, you can plan, okay, let's do a worship evening at church. You can't expect to have it at 4 o'clock in the evening. And if you keep it at 4 o'clock in the evening, nobody will come. Why? Because Monday to Friday, work is from 9 to 5. So if you have worship evening at 4 o'clock, nobody will come. Now it's not, wh whose fault is it? It's not their fault, they are working. We have to be wise on how we plan. So it's very important right, to get a feel of the place. Then you also look at you know uh, educational institutions. So for example, you want to reach out to educational institutions. OK, so how do I reach them? I know how to speak in English. So let me target the English speaking colleges. And how how can I go in? How can I minister to them? How, how will God open a door? So you pray, then you look at different opportunities. Say, okay, can we do life skills? Can we do uh, counseling programs, right? So these are the different uh, opportunities. And even as we go ahead, we'll talk about the different ways that we can uh, you know, start when we start a ministry, the different options that we have uh, that God can give us to build the church. So when we see this natural list, the natural dynamics, always keep this in your background. So anything that we do in terms of ministry in the church, you, you must look at this background. Okay, is it something that is going to relate to the people that I am ministering to? Right. So, for example, right, I, I keep giving a lot of examples, right, so so that we can understand. Now, I, I was saying, east of Bangalore is a corporate sector. We've got only IT companies, big apartments, big colleges. Uh, so it's an IT hub. Now, imagine if I say, okay, come on, church, we're going to do slum ministry. Now, is slum ministry good? Yes, it's good. Right, uh, reaching out to the slums and children. Now the problem is there is no slum there. So what must I do? I know that this is not something that is going to work in this area. So I need to understand, okay, now I should take it off. Now you've already done your survey. Okay, take it off. Okay, let's try uh, prison ministry. Okay, now for prison ministry, people are working Monday to Friday. And these are the, uh, you know, they're all working, family members, Saturday is some day, a day that they want to stay at home, rest, Sunday is church. Um, we'll try it out. But if it doesn't work, it's all right. right? So you're, it's not like you're, you're putting all your focus into that. The main focus is, okay, if it's a corporate sector, I need to be able to minister to them at that level, their understanding, right? You know, what's surprising is, uh, and this is something that I want to share, uh, you know, our allocation at Whitefield, we have a lot of people, all of them are working professionals, right? They're all in the corporate sector for 15 years, 20 years, all of them are there. You know, the volunteers, they have an Excel sheet. And when I saw that, I was surprised. I was so surprised. And I was like, wow. Oh, these are the people we are ministering to. They have an Excel sheet to show where the entrance is, where is the exit, where is the book table, how the book table should be placed. They have an Excel sheet on how many cables are there, how many mics, everything. Everything is on Excel. 
and, and then they opened that up and they keep. I was like, this is, these are the people we are ministering to. Why they know everything? And so we must understand. We, as leaders, we must think in their mindset, right? This will help us to pray for the city and to develop a heart for the city, right? Now, if you're in uh, now in the city, you may be in. So we we can divide the city into north, south, east, west, right? Now, for example, you are in the north of Bang or of any city that you are in. So you pray for that part of the city. You're praying, you're asking God, and God begins to lay certain things in your heart, and you begin to pray for these things. Now, always remember, in a city, there can be different dynamics, right? Very important now, especially if it's an urban city, north, south, east, west, can have different dynamics. What happens, what works in the north of a city may not work in the south. Or what works in the west of west area of a city may not work in the east. Right? So learn to also understand the dynamics of each city, of each area in a city. Of course, we pray for our city. But if God is strategically placing you in a certain part of a city, Learn to understand the dynamics of that area. What, what, what happens? So, for example, I'm just going to give you examples of Bangor because I've been born and brought up here, so I know a lot of places here. Now, if you look at South Bangalore, so East Bangalore, we saw it's filled with corporate offices, huge apartment. Now, look at South Bangalore, it's very different. It is small houses and it is it is it is a place where there's not much of corporate that is happening there. It's there that is prevalent, but there's also a lot of slum ministry. There are there are uh, you know, smaller uh, companies, smaller uh, uh, offices. The demographics are a bit different to that of East. same way in the other areas of the city. So. If you feel that God is placing you at a certain place in a city, understand the dynamics of that city and pray for that. Right? This will also allow God to place specific areas and needs of the city in your heart. So, for example, you're praying. God will say, Why don't you pray for you know the families in this area? Because families are breaking many families are going through challenges or why don't you pray for the youth there's too much of uh you know chaos among the youth the enemy is doing too much among the youth there's suicidal tendencies there are people who are you know uh, into drug addiction and uh, depression and uh, living immoral lives why don't you pray for that so the holy spirit is putting that in our heart God is placing in our heart to pray for the city. And this will also be important for us because when we are praying for the city, God will give us ideas and strategies to minister to the city. He will. He will give us ideas. Now, let me give you this example. Many years back, uh, when I was in the city of Mangalore, I saw these wonderful colleges huge colleges right institutions educational institutions wherever i would go there were college students coming out from everywhere so i thought to myself where are all these people coming from right so there was medical colleges there were engineering colleges there was all kinds of colleges and these colleges are so big which has about a thousand or uh, you know, 800,000 people in each college so began to pray. I said, God, open a door for us as a church into these colleges. So we prayed for about six months. I remember we would go out on front of the colleges and give out these tracts. And then many times, they, they, you know, the people would come and say, hey, you're not allowed to do this. Can you please go? We would go away. Um, and what happened was we remember we just 
went into one uh, one of the best colleges. So we said, okay, let's choose the best college in in Mangalore, in the city. We chose the best college, and we walked into that college. And we went. We said we want to meet with the principal. So we went. We met with the principal, and the principal. You know, we told him, see, this is what we are. We are Christians. We are, have a church here in the city, and we want to come. And you know, we we you know, I remember we just told them, see, many children are going through drug addictions. Youth are going through suicidal problems, and we are living immoral lives, drinking, uh, all of these problems. Can we talk about life skills? Can we talk about how, you know? as young people, as teens and youth, we can live a good life, honorable life. We'll take principles from the Bible. We may not you know, say the verses, but we'll take principles from the Bible and teach. You know, the principal was so happy. He said, when do you want to start? He didn't do any background check on us. He said, when do you want to start? He said, we'll start next week. We entered the best college in, in the city. And because of that, those started opening in different colleges. We were able to minister. We took scripture classes, and, uh, life skills sessions, and in many colleges, nursing colleges, engineering colleges. We got open doors. Now, what, what I'm trying to say is when we pray for the city, when we have a heart for the city, when we, when we understand the dynamics of a city, God begins to give us strategies and ideas. God will begin to open doors for us. All we have to do is trust in Him. Right? Uh, here, Pastor has written about uh, Kabul and how he went to Kabul, exploring Kabul. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, he, i just share briefly. Uh, Heard him share in some of our pastors' meetings, where uh, you know, God just ministered to him and went to Kabul, and he, you know, began to study the different uh, things that are happening there. He stayed there for a couple of weeks, began to study and learn and uh, try to get a feel of the place, and uh, uh, but eventually it could not happen because. It, his travel to the place he was in the united states at that time so traveling up and down was a problem but you know he was able to do some kind of a ministry there and then launching of apc in derla Kati, which is in mangalore uh, outskirts of mangalore uh, that was again wonderful where as a team you know three of them went went to this went to this place hired a hall did an event uh, a worship event and that's where the church was birthed, right? So, uh, so this is very important again, having a feed for the city, right? The initial homework is very important. This homework of sitting down, getting to know the dynamics is very, very important. Right? And it'll lead us into the right track. Right, let's get into chapter six. Any questions? Any thoughts you'd like to share? All right, let's get into chapter six. The spiritual dynamics of urban cities. Now, God is at work at, in our cities, but over time what's happened is there are all kinds of demonic oppositions demonic work, demonic activities that have perverted God's design for a church, for a city. God's design for a city is to be a city that is clean, that is to be pure, to be holy, to be righteous. Of course, the enemy has come in, Satan has come in, he and his angels and his demons are, are, are doing their activities. And there's so much of sin in the city. Look at these verses. Let's look, look at this in the book of Revelations. The Lord Jesus is talking to these churches. Right? So in Revelations chapter 2, he's, he's, he's directing his attention to these churches. First one, 
Revelations 2 and verse 10. Can any one of us read that, please? Revelations 2 and verse 10. Yes. Um, Revelation chapter 2, verse 3. Fear nothing that you are about to suffer. Behold, the devil is indeed about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested and proved and critically appraised. And for 10 days you yes. have affliction. Be loyally faithful unto death, and I'll give you the crown of life. Right. So we see here the church in Smyrna. The Lord Jesus is saying, a presence of people is there in the church that belong to Satan. They will hold, they will hold you, they will take you, they will put you in a prison, they will persecute you. The devil is going to cause some to be go, to go through intense persecution. But the Lord Jesus says, stay, stay strong in those times. Right? So there's a presence of a group that belongs to Satan. This is in the church. Right, next one, the church in Pergamos, Revelations 2, 13 and 14. Go ahead. Anybody can read, please? Okay, I'll read it. I, I know where you live, where Satan has his throne. Yet you remain true to my name. You did not renounce your faith in me, even in the days of Antiphas, my faithful witness, who has who was put to death in your city where Satan lives. Look at that. The words are so strong. Lord Jesus is saying, There are some, right? Uh, I I know where you live, where Satan has his throne, right? You did not renounce your faith, and it goes on and he says, who, are, who was put to death in your city where Satan lives. So the Lord Jesus is clearly saying, hey, the devil, Satan has his throne, his dominion, his authority is in the city. Right? So God's design for cities are to be blessed, to be prosperous, to, to, to do well. Uh, cities may grow, churches may grow. That's God's design. But Jesus is he's pointing out and he's saying, in this city where Satan has his throne, where Satan lives. So the world, that means what? The work of the enemy is strong in this place. Right? Uh, the doctrine of Balaam is infiltrating this church. So deception, lies of the enemy is infiltrating. Next one, the church in Thyatira, 2 verse 20. Revelations 2 20. Revelation chapter 2 verse 20. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you allow that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. Right. So again, in the church in Thyatira, Jesus is saying you tolerate this woman Jezebel. Now, if we look back uh, to the First Kings. Uh, and, and the life of Jezebel. It is not that Jezebel has, uh, you know, resurrected from the dead and come here. No, it's the spirit of Jezebel. What does the spirit of Jezebel do? Uh, calls herself a prophetess who misleads people, right? And makes my servant fall, fall into sexual immorality and in, involves them into eating, eating of food sacrificed to idols. So enticing. The spirit of Jezebel to entice, to bring temptation. So that spirit is working in Thyatira, a false prophet who is working in the church, in the city of Thyatira. Now, it's not like Jesus doesn't know. 
Jesus himself is saying all of this. Let's look at the last one. Church in Philadelphia, chapter 3 and verse 9. Revelations 3 and verse 9. Indeed, Indeed I, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who's, who say they are Jews and are not, but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you. I will make those who are of the synagogue of Satan. That means, what does it say? That means Satan has a synagogue of, that means a, a place already established in this place of Philadelphia. Our, that's 3 9, right? Yeah. Synagogue of Satan, who claim to be Jews, though they are not, but they are liars. I will make them come and fall down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. So again, you're a presence of group of a group of people who belong to Satan and will cause them to bow before the church. Now, all of these places, you see the spiritual dynamics of this church, the churches. Everywhere, Satan has his presence. Every city, Satan has his work. You got the spirit of Jezebel, you got the spirit of Satan, you, you got the spirit of accusations, false prophets, and, and the work of the, of the devil, his throne, meaning his authority, his dominion, his power, is working over the cities. So when we see spiritual beings influencing natural leaders, understand that it is the work of the enemy. Right? Where you know the enemy can use people to overpower cities. He can control cities. Uh, when you do, read the book of uh, Revelations, we see that you know Babylon is referred to as the enemy's territory, right? Uh, uh, and and Satan attempts to pervert, that is, to still steal, kill, and destroy God's design for the city. So, when you and I understand and know what God wants to do in our city. We also try to understand the spiritual aspect. We've seen the natural aspects. Okay, these are the people, this is where they stay, this is what the demographics are, the youth, the families, the young adults, the teens, the senior citizens. These are the, uh, this is the economy. You've done the natural, but the spiritual is as much as important as the natural. So you look at where the enemy has his throne where the enemy has his working. What is he doing? Right Now, it's not that we are setting our focus on the enemy. It's not like we are spending time looking at what the enemy is doing. They are just trying to understand the spiritual dynamics so that when you and I pray, we can pray taking the name of Jesus in authority, breaking those bondages. Right? Satan attempts to destroy the plan of uh, you know of, of God's plan in a city but the church which is the body of Christ which you and I want to plant or the pioneer or the, uh, you know to start in a city that is what is going to go and advance against the kingdom of the devil right what does Jesus say I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it so the gates of hell are there in every city. But we don't focus on what the devil is doing. We, we understand it and we counterattack. Okay, so this is what the devil is doing. We're going to continue to use the name of Jesus. We're going to continue in prayer, continue to raise uh, our, our voices and pray and pray for the city, pray for our youth, pray for our families, pray against demonic oppositions, pray against the... Uh, uh, the influences of the devil, suicidal tendencies, depression, uh, you know, now with uh, LGBTQ and all these things that have come up against the word of God, we can stand in prayer.
right? So it will be useful to know what God is already doing in the city, what are the demonic strongholds, and 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 then we can target our prayers towards that, right? So culture, right? So now when we understand some of the some of this spiritual dynamics, it is often expressed in these different ways, right? Again, the spiritual dynamics may be different for different places, different cities, different regions, different nations, it's completely different, right? Now, culture. Now, if you look at our nation, nation of India is a nation filled with culture. We have art, dance, we have customs, we have superstitions that we cannot count. Superstition for even colors, for any kind of thing, there are superstitions. It's one time uh, I was in a hurry and I booked a cab and sat on the cab. I had to go to a certain place. And, and suddenly the driver stopped. I said, what happened? He said, no, I, uh, I said, Come on, quickly, I need to get to this place. I'm already late. Why have you stopped? The road is empty. I said, no, the cat has passed by. A black cat. So I said, the cat is going and finding food for themselves. Why are you worried? No, it's bad omen. What if we meet with an accident? So he said, next five minutes, we have to wait here. So for the next five minutes, we were, I was sitting in the car waiting for the cat, for the driver to believe that the cat's uh, anger is gone. And the cat doesn't know why it is there. The cat doesn't even know why it has crossed the road. It has just crossed the road. But we were superstitious. Uh, and those these superstitions can get bigger and it can really uh, cause divisions, it can cause panic, it can it can do so much, it can destroy a person's life. Then you got social geography. That is distribution of religious groups, dominant ideologies, philosophies, religious leaders, religious systems. Now, again, if you look at our nation, our nation is a nation with so much that is happening, innumerable gods. Right. So again, what is the what is the demography? What is the what is the understanding of these religious groups? What is the dominant ideology of the city? Uh, it can it can be portrayed, uh, and even as we study it, you will understand it. What are the moral values? You know, some in some places you you see that uh, people are you know they adjust with each other. They somehow uh, you know, look after each other, or they, you know they, they or some places they mind their own business. They don't have any problems, but in some places there's always fights always murder neighbors killing another neighbor moral values addictions human trafficking bonded labor suicidal rate corruption crime rate all of this are the works of the devil through his spirits and then when we know this what are the major needs to be addressed in a city what kind of problems are NGOs facing? What kind of problems are churches facing? When we know this, we know that okay, we've got something that we can plan and do our ministry. I always say this, what worked five years ago doesn't work now. Or what worked 10 years back may not work now. People have changed. The natural dynamics have changed. The spiritual dynamics also have changed. You know, who knew that in a nation like ours would come a time when, you know, the gay and the lesbian marriages would be open. It's open now in our nation. Right. So things are changing. And, and, and so we must also be aware of what the enemy is doing. There's a question that we can ask ourselves. Think of examples where you observe something expressed in the natural in the city, which is indicative of certain spiritual dynamics in a city. And how does making such observation help you develop a strategy towards 
that area or that need. Okay, so let, let me just help you understand the question. Think of a certain, uh, maybe in your own cities, think of a certain thing that you know is the work, is a demonic work, it's not a natural thing. And think of a, how, you know, maybe some decisions that you have made or you are planning to make uh, to develop a strategy on how to help these people. Now, I'll give you one example. I'll, I'll just share this and I'll probably leave it open for a few minutes. First one, in our city, you know that Bangalore is, has the highest suicidal rate in our nation. And I was so surprised. Why Bangalore? It's a good city. Everything is there. You know, people are working. People, the economy is good. Loneliness. So we see that's a problem. That's a demonic work. What is it that we can do to reach out to people? What are some of the strategies that we can do? So I'll just leave this open. Is there anyone? Uh, some is there something that you'd like to share where you know that in this certain area this is the problem, and you know what maybe a strategy that you're planning to develop or you already developed to minister in those areas. Would anyone like to share? I hope you understood the question. Anyone would like to share? Yeah. It could be in your hometown, or it could be wherever you are, your neighborhood, your city, anywhere, or even your nation. Anyone would like to share? Okay. All right. So then what you can do is uh, you can probably make a note of that if you feel that this is something in my area or my city uh, you know, that needs, that we know is a demonic work, it's a demonic uh, oppression, and we see that the devil is working there. You can come up with ideas. So for example, I, I know a pastor uh, who's very close, uh, and he he lives in the city of Mumbai, and uh, God has placed in his heart for to minister to uh, prostitutes in red light areas. So you know, he he I I always I asked him how did you start this ministry. So he used to pray, and every time, you know, being a man, being a married man, going into these red light areas, people will question. So he said, God, how do I reach out? How do I do it? And you know, God just gave him an idea. He said, Go to the police and get permission from the local chief like like the, the the head of the department so what he did was he went to the police officer and he said see this is what i am a christian I'd like to help these people these are young girls maybe some of them below 18 i'd like to just share about jesus they may be lonely and so somehow got through god's favor he got a door open and he started on a uh, with Christmas carols, just going with two, three of them, uh, singing songs, Christmas songs in that red light area. Now picture this, you've got hundreds of prostitutes living in that road. You would go there and they would sing songs. And obviously the prostitutes would come out and listen, uh, and he would do this in the daytime. So uh, over time, he was able to minister to them. People started trusting in his ministry. People started... And over time, even those leaders who let the prostitution ring uh, were open to him coming and you know, sharing the gospel ministry to him. And uh, you, know, you just see God's favor. But the background was a lot of prayer. God laid in his heart. So he was able to do it. And he's continuing to do that, right? ministering to them. Many times they also rescue some of them. Uh, uh, you know, some of them are even given jobs in the city, and many lives have been changed through his ministry. Right? So, the same way, you and I can identify places in our city, and if you feel that God is placing that in your heart prayerfully, you can develop a plan, develop a strategy, form a team, see uh, if you can go and reach out to these places. Right. Sometimes it, you know, God doesn't. It's not like we have to start a church only. God can use these ministries as well, like pioneering ministries to 
uh, do urban church planting and ministry. Right. OK, we'll stop here. We will continue from the next class. Uh, and uh, we'll pick up from the next chapter, which is chapter six, chapter seven, urban church planting and missions in the book of Acts. We'll pull up some examples from there and uh, we'll learn from them. Right. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, uh, I know we I have been speaking the most, but uh, in the next class, we'll keep it open. I'd love when you share your thoughts as well, uh, keep it more interactive as well. All right, thank you so much for joining. We'll catch up next class. God bless. Thank you.